It's Made It Mondays with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be doing a little old-fashioned punched tin art. But of course, we're going to be doing it with some Dollar Tree materials. I'm going to be using this drawing that says Home Sweet Home. If you would like a copy of it, you will find it in the comments below as a free printable that you can use to make one too. I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree foam board and I already pre-cut it to nine and a quarter inches by 10 and a quarter inches. Four of these one gallon paint sticks, an aluminum cookie tray that I got at the Dollar Tree, this gel stain that I got from Hobby Lobby in the color maple, my super glue fix all adhesive that I got from the Dollar Tree, some hot glue, and I did not use the wood glue this time. And you do need a nail of some type, but you do not need a hammer, it turns out. The first thing I did was draw around my foam board with a marker onto my cookie tin. And then I'm taking my scissors and I'm going to go in and cut it out. This part is not difficult at all. Scissors just cut right through this metal. And now I'm taking a scraper. I'm using my Cricut one, but you could use a credit card or any hard, soft plastic. And I'm going to go in and flatten out my cookie tin, for lack of a better term. I'm just going to scrape it down and get rid of all the bumps and make sure we have a smooth surface to work with. Now I'm taking my super glue fix all adhesive and I'm spreading it all over the foam board and I'm going to smooth down our piece of tin. Due to the flattening of the tin, it is a little larger now than the piece of foam board. So you'll want to trim that up. And then I come in with a little hot glue around all of the edges and the corners. And now I'm going to use my four inch table saw that I got from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to cut two paint stirrers at nine and a quarter inches and two at eight and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to take a baby wipe and this gel stain and I'm going to go in and stain all of my wood pieces that I'm going to use as the frame around my picture. I'm going to stain the front and all of the edges. It is not necessary to stain the back because you won't be seeing that. We're going to actually glue it down to our frame. I love this gel stain, y'all. It cleans up so easily and it has absolutely no odor. Now that our glue is dry, I went in and measured one inch from the bottom, one inch from the top, and one inch from each side. And then I'm just going to tape down my picture here. For this project, you're just going to push your nail down through the tin and part of the foam board. It really isn't difficult at all, and you can use whatever size nail you want, but honestly, a longer one would make it easier. But I did get a clue when I started the second half of this project and turned it around, and I added some medical tape to the top of my nail, and goodness, it went so much more easily. It was great. Before I put on my wood trim, I'm going to go in with my furniture repair markers, and coincidentally, I had the color maple, and I'm going to just stain the sides of the foam board. It just made it look better from the sides once you get the wood on. And now I'm just using a little hot glue and I'm going to start first at the bottom and carefully line up my trim. And then I'll do one side and then the second side, being sure to line them up as evenly as possible. And finally, we'll put on the top. For a hanger, I'm just going to tie a couple of knots and some twine on each end. And then we'll just glue that right down to the back. And once it sets, I'll just put a little more glue right there on top. And there's our finished product. I think it looks exactly like punched tin. I don't know if it shows up as well on the video, but I truly love this and it's going to be hanging in my home. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. 
Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos five days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you will find something you like here at Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this wooden frame that I got at the Dollar Tree. The cutout in the middle is about four by four. Some white Waverly chalk paint, some Mod Podge, some scrapbook paper, one of these wooden bunnies that I got at the Dollar Tree, and finally some scrap organza pink ribbon and a pom-pom. My plan is to turn this into a cute Easter frame that I can display my children when they were younger. I'm going to take out the paper at the back so that we can paint it and I'm going to give it a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to paint the edges first and then I'll paint the front and the back as well. And I'll also paint the little stick that came with it to use as a stand. I picked out a page from this Blossoms and Butterflies stack that makes me think of Easter. It has a lot of glitter and cute pastel colors. And I'll just trace around my frame onto my scrapbook paper, including the middle. And first I'm going to cut out the middle using my metal ruler and my Zacto knife. And then I'll just cut out my frame as well using my scissors. And now I'm going to apply a good coat of Mod Podge on the front of my frame and I'll put a coat on my scrapbook paper as well and then apply it down to the frame, smoothing out all the air bubbles. But this paper is very forgiving because it's so thick. Now let's trace our bunny down on the gingham paper. You can use whatever color you would like for your particular frame. And then I'm going to cut that out as well. And then I decided I needed to paint the bunny. So I'm going to paint all of the edges and the back and the front because some of the bunny will show from the back side of the frame. I used Mod Podge and I applied my scrapbook paper to my bunny in the same way that I did on the frame. And now I'm just smoothing that out. I'm going to glue a pom-pom right there on his tail, and I could have used a smaller one, but I wanted it to be a bit exaggerated. Now I'm going to apply my little stand at the back so that I can get the perfect placement for my bunny, because I don't want him sticking down too far. And then I'll just place him on with a little hot glue, of course. And then I'm going to take a little floral wire, because we do need a bow to go at the top. I'm going to use that scrap piece of organza I had. It was about 14 inches long. I'm going to twist some floral wire right around the middle so it can hold its shape. And I'm going to take a thin piece of pink ribbon that I found in my stash here. And I'm going to just tie a knot around the middle to hide the wire. I'll just clip off those ends. Put a little hot glue at the top and apply it down to the frame. You have to hold it a few seconds for that glue to set. And now let's put our cardboard back in because I haven't found my picture yet. And there's our frame. I love it so much. Let's put the stand back in. I love how it comes with that. I think that turned out rather cute and screams Easter. And there it is on my tray. I love Easter, y'all, so much. You've heard me say that a lot. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. 
Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, let's see if we can turn these four clothespins into four small carrots. We need some orange paint. I'm going to use this Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Some green twine. I got mine at the Dollar Tree. And finally, my paintbrush and my hot glue gun. The first thing I want to do is go in and take my clothespins apart. Take off the metal clip that's in the middle. We can save those for a different project. I just used my paint can opener for this. Mostly because I couldn't find my screwdriver. And now it's time to give them a very good coat of this pumpkin orange chalk paint. It only took one coat, but I did have to paint all of the sides and the edges. And now I'm taking the twine and I'm going to twist it around my hands 20 times. I did count it to make sure I did the same thing every time. Not that it's that important. This twine is from the Dollar Tree and I found that you cannot open it up. If you have a different kind of green twine, another good look would be to open up the threads. So once I get it gathered up in my hand there, I'm going to, of course, cut off the excess, and then I'm going to cut, come in and cut the loops on one end. I just pull it to the end and cut right through. Then I'm going to take my clothespins and I'm going to glue them together, smooth sides together, and points down to kind of give us the shape of a carrot. Just like that. And I cleaned off all that excess glue. And then around the top piece, I'm going to put some glue and then take my twine with the cut ends down and kind of spread it around the clothespin. I just add more glue if I need to and just work it around the sides. And then I trim up the excess at the ends to keep it kind of even. And then I'm going to glue a piece of twine at the edge and then twist it around the clothespin several times to give our carrot a nice finished look. And then place a little hot glue, cut off the excess. And now we get to cut the second set of loops there at the top. We'll just trim that up to the length we want, fluff it out, and I decided it needed a little more length off. And once it's fluffed out, it starts to look like a carrot. I think that's going to be cute on my tiered tray. And then I decided I would just go in and glue all of my clothespins at one time back to back. I like to work in an assembly line process. And then I start making the greenery for the top of my carrots by twisting it 20 times around. Put glue on the top of the carrot and spread those threads all around the sides. Trim off that excess. And now we'll clean up the mess we made. Little glue on the side. And now I'm trimming up all the tops. And that turned out pretty cute, I think. Let me know if you tried this carrot making process. And now they're displayed on my tray. I cannot wait till Easter, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!